Today we're taking a look at the Sony XP3 Plus. This is the successor to the Sony XP3, a very well-loved device by the community. And this device has just improved in a lot of the areas where the Sony XP3 just needed a little bit extra things like the camera, the battery life, things of that nature, but still remains most of the same package. Let's talk a little bit more about build quality, where you can get it, price, things of that nature. When it comes to the build quality of the device, it is a rugged device. Now, I did a review on the CAT S22 Flip, which you can find up here in the card. And that device is also rugged, but it is quite heavier. So the Sony XP3 Plus, it's less heavy than the um, CAT S22 Flip, and it works very well in those basic categories. It sends text messages, it has T9, works with group text messaging, Vo LTE, Vo Wi-Fi, as it's running an Android 11 Go edition, as well as the CAT S22 Flip. The other tail for the Sony XP3 Plus is that it doesn't have a touchscreen. So this is not a super smart dumb phone. Yes, you can still install applications like Android applications, but it's going to be more of the experience of navigating through a mouse or navigating through the D-pad, not necessarily navigating with a touchscreen like the CAT S22 Flip. But I do like the device in that regard because it doesn't have a lot of the smart features. This is a dumb phone proper made for dumb phone tasks, calls, text messaging, and a couple of extra things if you actually need it. It's going to be a more cumbersome experience than having a touchscreen like the CAT S22 Flip, but I think there is an audience for that. Now, the build quality is superb. Very well done, very light, but also very durable. The flaps are very well positioned. It has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It has programmable keys as well. And it also has a little bit of a screen at the front that you can interact with. You can actually unlock it, see a couple of notifications without having to open the device. And again, I think it works very good. Now, the thing that this device excels at is battery life. So it's better than the CAT S22 Flip, I think because it doesn't have that touchscreen that is draining all the power or using it as much, number one. And number two, it has a feature called adaptive battery. So when you're using it, it's going to switch to a profile and when you're not using it, it's going to save and conserve battery like a uh, Bluetooth LE, like, you know, low power that they are not consuming as much power when you're not using it, but when you're using it, it's going to adapt to your usage and it's going to learn how you use the device. I've been quite impressed with how it adapts to the battery life of, of you know, kind of my usage when I use it in the morning and when I use it at night, it's not extremely amazing you know it's not like a smartphone a complete full smartphone although it does have the features right but the software is just not there but again battery life is very good lasting three to four days with medium usage it works on the t-mobile network you can also unlock it to use on other networks and i'm still testing to see the full compatibility i tested on t-mobile and us mobile without any issues not on the verizon side of things for us mobile not the super lte but just the regular one I'm still trying to unlock this device. They unlocked my CAT S22 Flip and then they said, uh, you gotta wait for the Sony XP3 Plus. But, you know, alas, it is what it is. This is a quite new device and I, I am able to wait. I'll be updating things on the website if you're trying to find this dumb phone or any of the other dumb phones to see what compatibility it has. But it has a lot of the bands. It probably can work very well with most carriers here in the United States. Now, the device also has three keys at the top. These are the ones that you're going to use in order to navigate. So I really like that it has those keys, especially for certain apps when you're trying to get to a setting. It has kind of like that ability to interact with the applications without the touchscreen because that's the most difficult part. But if you want to make a seamless experience, especially when you're opening apps that are not the stock applications of the device, then I will say just install a mouse and interact with it that way. Now, there are some drawbacks to this device. And of course, namely, the camera is not amazing. It's not great. Very comparable to the CAT S22 Flip, but not comparable to, for example, the Xiaomi Chin uh, F21 Pro, which has probably one of the best cameras that I've seen, or the Shot Classic also has a little bit of a better camera than this one, but it's still in that comparable. Now, you're not looking for a dumb phone for the camera specifications, but again, it's, it's going to be doable, it's going to be good. Now, it doesn't have a front-facing camera, so even if you install WhatsApp or even if you install uh, an application for video calls, which you can, 
it's not going to be able to run for the front facing camera, only the back facing camera. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. What I do like about this device is that it doesn't compromise on the privacy kind of idea. So it does run Android 11 Go Edition, but it runs the bare bones. It doesn't have a lot of the proprietary stuff like the T-Mobile extra apps or Google extra apps. So again, this is not a CAT S22 Flip super smart, but rather a very basic version, an upgrade to the Sony XP3. And the Sony XP3 Plus lives up to its name. It has better build quality, better speakers, better battery life, better calls, a more updated operating system that is able to interact with different applications and as well conserve a lot of that power. So I think it's a very, very good device for the price. $210 here in the United States. And of course, you have to pay tax on that, but you can get it at any store on T-Mobile. You can ship it to your house and you will have no issues. Also, it probably will come into Amazon in the future. So just wait for that to, to come over. There's one more thing that I'd like to know about the Sony device, and that is that it has this app called Sony Scout. Now the CAT S22 also has a proprietary app also for support, but this one was very responsive, very well made, and it allows you to connect quickly to, let's say, Bluetooth devices, or if you have a support question, you're able to call or chat very easily. And personally, I like the implementation of the X-T9 keyboard here, so it works very well for that. It was kind of like an added benefit of buying a premium device, right? You, you get the support for a couple of years and you're able to ask questions or you're able to have those extra needs that just kind of arise when you're using a device like this. Or if you have an elderly parent, then they can call and kind of ask questions, you know, without bugging you all over, right? Or chat. But this is made for someone who wants a basic device and add a couple of extra features, you're not gonna use them all the time because you don't have a touch screen, but you can have them there in case of an emergency. I really liked using the Sony XP3 Plus and the CAT S22 Flip. Personally, I think they're made for two different people. The CAT S22 is a transition device for those of you who want to have a rugged device, but also the touch screen and all of the goodies. The Sony XP3 Plus is made for those who just want calls, text, basic functionalities. And on top of that, you may have a couple of extra things here and there. If you have any questions about the Sony XP3 Plus, please let me know. Very good device, I really enjoyed it. And of course, I'll be doing kind of like other videos, other comparisons, maybe a live stream for which flip phone is the best. But if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be interacting with you guys. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.